Hey gorgeous, it's Kerleen. Thank you so much for tuning back into my channel. In today's video, we are talking sillage. These are some fragrances that I feel have the most amazing scent trail. When you walk past someone, when you walk through a room, they leave a very intoxicating, sweet, and sometimes sexy sillage behind. If you're interested in hearing about what those fragrances are for me, then please keep watching. Hi friend, I hope that whenever you're watching this, your day is going beautifully, that you're in good health, and if anything, I hope that this video brings you a little bit of joy. If you are new here, thank you so much for clicking on that thumbnail on this channel. I talk luxury, I do review videos, I share my fragrance journey like today, and I also sprinkle in a little bit of lifestyle here and there. So if any of those things sound like your cup of tea, I would love to have you here. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and also be sure to turn Turn on that notification bell so you know exactly where my videos drop all right let's get into it so the first one is Bora Bora now Bora Bora is not one that people would typically wear in the fall and winter although this opens up with florals so it has tropical florals like tiare and ylang it has jasmine and then it has apricot in the opening the middle to base notes is where this fragrance gets very sweet and delectable and delicious so at the mid you have coconut then at the base you have caramel amber and vanilla so to my nose this fragrance dries down to something very delicious with the floral still being very prominent I love white florals I love tropical florals and I love a good caramel and vanilla in the base of my fragrance the coconut in here is not overdone so although this does have a little bit of a tropical facet it's not overwhelming and it does not take over the fragrance this is one y'all that will leave a scent trail that lingers in the air not only is this bee smoke so this will fill a room especially if you do any more than eight sprays this will definitely fill fill a room. This one also has the most intoxicating and beautiful and lingering scent trail. This is one that if I sprayed on in the farthest corner of my house, my kids could be on the opposite end of the house and they will smell this. This fragrance has the most amazing sillage. It is worth every single penny and you'll notice a theme in this video. It's either I'm showing you a niche fragrance or an Arabian fragrance and recently here that's all I've been purchasing. It's either niche or a Arabian because that is where I've been finding the best quality and just the best overall value. So Bora Bora by Giardini di Toscana is one that is incredibly great quality, a great value worth every single penny I paid for it. Another fragrance that has an absolutely intoxicating scent trail and fills a room. This is also another beast mode fragrance is Club de Nuit Imperial by Armaf. Now I have talked about this fragrance at length on this channel. I will link a video where I talked about this one previously, so I won't take too long talking about this one, but this one has top notes of lychee, bergamot, and nutmeg. It has a gorgeous rose and a very delicate peony, a vanilla and a musk at the mid, and then it has a creamy vanilla, a soft and velvety cashmere, cedar, and incense at the base. If the notes for this one sound familiar at all, it is because this is a dupe of Delina uh, exclusive by Paul Fender Marley. This fragrance, y'all, oh my goodness, it's gotten better with time. It is so creamy. The florals are there, but they're wrapped and drenched in just this milky creaminess. This is also very sweet. This is very bold. It definitely fills a room. And what I find really intriguing about this scent, this scent profile, this fragrance, this concoction, is that it is both beast mode, but very soft and feminine all at the same time. This is a fragrance where you get your money's worth. It's going to fill a room, but it is also going to cling in the air. It's gonna sit in the air. It's going to stay on your clothes until you wash your clothes and maybe after. And the scent trail is absolutely alluring and very feminine and inviting and bold all at the same time. People smell this one long after I leave a room. It is that good. This is Club de Nuit Imperial by Armaf. And speaking of fragrances that 
stay on your clothing until you wash your clothes. This next one does that and then some. It might still be on your clothes after several washes. That's how potent this next one is. This is one I've talked about on the channel quite a lot as well. This is Afnan Edict Amber Rhythm. So Amber Rhythm has top notes of cinnamon, amber, and tonka bean a very heavy hitter list of top notes. So it opens up very sweet, thick, creamy, a little spicy with that cinnamon. And then at the mid, it develops with saffron, vanilla, and jasmine. So it has a familiar floral, it has an exotic spice in that saffron, and then it has that creamy vanilla, adding more sweetness to this fragrance. And the base notes are ambergris, cedar, and sandalwood. Some more creaminess with that sandalwood, a crisp, woody note in that cedar. And then the ambergris gives this like a touch of musk, like a very skin-like musk. So this fragrance is sweet, it's warm, it's spicy, it's bold, it's skin-like, a little animalic. It's witty, but not too much so. Overall, this is not only a great year-round fragrance, but it's perfect this fall and winter because it's heavy, it's thick, it's sweet, but it has this perfumey essence to it. This one is another one that I've talked about quite a lot on the channel, so I will link a video where I mentioned it previously so that you can get more details on this fragrance. This is another one where that sillage is going to follow you wherever you go, and it's going to stay right where you left it, and people are going to be left wondering who is that and what is that amazing fragrance I'm smelling. That's the kind of fragrance that Amber Rhythm is to me. And so this is one I would highly recommend if you're looking for something like that. But just from my personal experience, this one is a steal. The price is right and the quality you get is niche quality with this particular fragrance. Again, this is Afnan's Edict Amber Rhythm. This next one is one that I could not wait until it started to cool down to wear again because it's not gotten a lot of love from me this past year. It's one that is very special to me, but I just wasn't reaching for it because it is one of those heavy hitter scents. It has patchouli in it. So in today's video, this is the closest designer like fragrance. However, this one is a little bit pricier. It is a luxury fragrance. And this is Attrape Rêve by Louis Vuitton. So the thing I love about Atacuev is although it is floral, it's very feminine, it's very crisp and clean, and it has like this fresh spicy thing going on, it's also extremely long lasting and will be on my clothes long after I wash them. And I think that's because of the notes. So this opens up with lychee and ginger and bergamot. So a very fresh, bright, slightly zesty opening. Then it develops into a gorgeous peony and rose mixture. And I feel like those two notes blend really beautifully here because it's not like it's peony or rose forward. It's just a nice mix of the two with a dusting of cacao. And then at the base you have patchouli. So a very simplistic note list, but this fragrance is absolutely gorgeous. And I think it's the patchouli that's in this fragrance, which by the way gets a little bit stronger every year, that gives this one that lasting and enduring scent trail. It is a very potent fragrance. This is so pretty. It's absolutely intoxicating. It's so feminine and fresh and floral. And as of right now, the patchouli is there and it's doing its thing. It's not overpowering, but it's definitely stronger than when I first purchased this fragrance. It's gotten more mature and it's developed, but the florals in here are also a lot more prominent and a lot more mature as well. This is a fragrance that, although I would love to reach for it year round, it was just a little too heavy for me in the spring and summer here in Florida. Florida, it's so humid and so hot and it could easily become overwhelming. However, in the cold weather, this fragrance is going to be in heavy rotation for me because this is one that's going to withstand cold weather. This is one where I know I'm going to stand out because it smells very unique. It smells luxurious. It smells high quality and it also smells very feminine. So I just love the way the notes are done in this fragrance. And while I'm not the biggest fan of patchouli, this is a patchouli that I can definitely do, especially in cold weather. This is Attrape Rêve by Louis Vuitton. The next one is another new fragrance to my collection. And this is one that is perfection for the fall and winter. And this one is Sweet Heaven by Gulf Orchid. As you can tell by the bottle, this is another dupe for Angel's Share by Killian. Sweet Heaven has top notes of cocoa, orange, and hazelnut. It has middle notes of myrrh, cashmere, and amber, and base notes of sandalwood, vanilla, 
Tonka and Musk. What I love about this fragrance is it smells like the most delicious yet boozy baked treat. This fragrance is warm, it's sweet, it's spicy, like a warm spicy, it's a little bit boozy, it's creamy, it's velvety, it's so luxurious, and it has this sensuality to it because of that myrrh that's in this fragrance. It's like this deep and bold resinous note. When I first put this on, I sprayed it on and I walked around and my husband walked into another room of the house and commented on how good this smelled and how it smelled like a baked treat. And y'all, that is exactly what this smells like. Now the notes are a little bit different than Angel Share. So although this has like a boozy touch to it, it's not quite as boozy as Angel Share. And Angel Share opens up with cognac. So it has a very booze forward opening. Whereas this one just has a boozy essence. And I think it has something to do with that myrrh. Make Making it very deep and resinous and almost mysterious. This one to my nose is also a lot sweeter. So to my nose, Angel Share has a little bit of a drier feel, whereas this one feels more sweet, more warm, and a little bit more feminine leaning than Angel Share. Now, Angel Share is definitely a unisex fragrance, and this one is as well, but this one is just a little bit more feminine leaning. So if you thought Angel Share smelled a little too masculine, even though it is unisex, Sweet Heaven is sweeter, it's a lot warmer, richer, it's not as dry as Angel Share feels. And in lieu of that oak, that really dry and strong wood that is in Angel Share, Sweet Heaven instead has a sandalwood, which is a creamy wood. And then it has myrrh, which is that deep and resinous note. The opening is also a little bit more interesting in this one. This one has an orange and a hazelnut, so it's a little nutty and a cocoa. And I know that Angel Share has an almond, at the base or at the mid and so there is a nuttiness to angel share as well so that's why i say this one is a dupe for it it's not an exact dupe but it is a dupe it gives the same warm baked good slightly boozy dessert type of feel but this one just feels a lot more accessible a lot more palatable a lot more friendly and it is a little bit more feminine leaning to my nose and in keeping with the theme of this video this is one that leaves a beautiful scent trail. It lingers in the air and the scent trail was still in the air long after I left the room. So I can only imagine how amazing this one is going to be in like a month or so because this is a very new bottle of fragrance. Oh my goodness, so good. I'm gonna let this macerate. I'm gonna let it do its thing. And next month when it cools down even more, this one is going to be in a heavy rotation. I'm so excited about it. In comparison to a fragrance like Angel Share, this one just has a little bit more of a je ne sais quoi. It's just so much more inviting and welcoming and approachable. So this is Sweet Heaven by Golf Orchid. Speaking of fragrances that smell very sweet and delectable and leave an intoxicating and inviting and warm and just enveloping centrail, this next fragrance is that kind of a fragrance. This is Bond Number no. Nine's New Harlem. When I first heard about this fragrance, I heard that it smells like breakfast, like pancakes, like maple syrup, and I got so excited and I went had purchased it during a sale that Joma Shop was having and when I received it I did not expect it to be masculine leaning whatsoever so just keep that in mind if this is something that you've been checking out and your taste is similar to my taste this one is a little bit masculine leaning however in the cold weather this is going to be absolutely amazing this fragrance leaves the most delicious and sweet scent trail and it's just one that is so inviting and warm and comforting and this is one that my husband has told me he can smell and it smells sweet and delicious after I've left a room. So I love that this one leaves such an inviting scent trail and it's perfect for those days when you want to feel cozy and you also maybe want to evoke a cozy presence. This is the perfect scent. It's not a super dressy scent. It's more on the casual side in my opinion, but it's one that I would throw on if I were headed out and it were cold and I just wanted to feel cozy and I wanted others around me to feel warm and fuzzy on the inside as well. New Harlem has top notes of lavender, bergamot, and green leaves. And the lavender, by the way, is probably why this one has a little bit more of a masculine touch to it. It has coffee and cedar at the mid, and it has vanilla, patchouli, tonka bean, and amber at the base. 
Now, I don't get a ton of coffee in here, neither do I get a strong patchouli note, if you're wondering about that. The notes in this one are a bit nondescript. It's hard to pinpoint the notes. They're not very distinctive. And that's why people describe this one as just all of the scents and smells that you would get during breakfast time. This just gives like this warm and fuzzy feel. And I enjoy this one because I'm a big breakfast girly. I love the feel and the textures and the sights and the sounds that I get when I wake up in the morning and I'm cooking breakfast and I'm making coffee and just that warm and fuzzy feel. That that is what I enjoy about this fragrance. Mm. Y'all, this one just smells so sweet. That's the best way I can describe it. It smells like maple syrup with like a touch of that masculine lavender lingering in the background. It just smells sweet and when I wear it, it stays in the air. If I were to try to paint a visual picture of what New Harlem smells like to me, I picture a Hallmark romance during the holidays. So this fragrance is sweet and warm and inviting, kind of like that Hallmark romance, the way it starts out. And then that touch of masculinity and that lavender and the cedar is what evokes the romance part of the Hallmark movie. So I know that's a strange analogy, but that is how this fragrance makes me feel. That's why I would wear it on colder days. This one just gives all the warm and fuzzy feels. So this is Bond Number no. 9's New Harlem. And next, I saved the best for last. This is a new one to my collection and this fragrance is everything. The performance is out of this world and this fragrance smells so delicious and so sweet and yummy and it's perfect for gourmand lovers this fall and winter. This fragrance y'all is a French patisserie. It's the most posh bakery. It's a kitchen where a lot of love is being poured into the most crispy and mouth-watering pastries. And this is La Taffa's Artisan Ethnique. Artisan Ethnique, interestingly enough, opens up with rum. I don't pick up a strong rum note in this fragrance, but it does open up with rum. It also opens up with cinnamon. The spice is definitely there. And this is a sugary, sweet fragrance. Not overwhelmingly so, but a very sweet fragrance nonetheless. This also develops into caramel, coffee, cacao, and oak moss. And I definitely pick up the sweet saltiness of the caramel and the dusting of that cocoa powder, that cacao. And then at the base, we have labdanum, which is a deep, resinous, bold, and powerful note. And then it has vanilla, tonka bean, and cashmere wood. This fragrance is beautiful. If you love a good gourmand fragrance, but you want something that's nuanced, something that feels a little bit more like an elevated gourmand, something that feels a little bit more serious, but still gives you those touches of sweetness and warmth and just overall deliciousness, this is one that, in my opinion, does all of that. This is a more elevated gourmand that stands on its own, is bold, is powerful, and it leaves the most intoxicating and delicious and inviting scent trail. Unlike the previous fragrance, New Harlem, this one does not feel casual. It can be worn in casual settings, but this one feels a little bit more dressed up. It's a little bit more elevated, as I mentioned, and that's probably because of those really bold and powerful notes, especially the way this opens up. It opens up with that rum, it has oak moss, it has that labdanum. So it has some really grown up and elevated fragrance notes. And I think that's why I feel like this one is a little bit more dressy, a little bit more serious than a fragrance like New Harlem. This one leaves one of the more powerful and bold scent trails of all of the fragrances I've shown you today. This one will turn heads, this one will make a statement and will stand out. And this one is perfectly unisex, but I think it means just a touch more feminine in my opinion. I've shared about this before, I'll link the video here, but I will also be back with more thoughts on this fragrance because it has now moved up to my top favorites. One of my top favorite fragrances of the moment and currently it's an obsession. This is Artisan Ethnique by Latafa. Okay friend, thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you're still here, I appreciate you so much and thank you for taking time out of your day to spend some time with me over here. If you enjoy fragrance content and you're not subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and turn on that notification bell so you never miss another video. And today, before we part ways, I wanted to share something with you that I was reminded of just yesterday. And that is that in discovering who we are, in discovering 
our identities and really building a strong sense of self, we have to be patient with ourselves. Uncovering your true identity is not a linear process. It takes time, it takes refinement, multiple drafts, it takes intention, and in most cases, it takes a lot of work. And sometimes we're not willing to do that work. I know for me, I didn't start really unpacking and uncovering who I was until I started doing the work. I started spending time with God. I started journaling. I started paying attention to the things that I'm wired to do, to my interests, the things that I like. And the more I started to do the work, I started to realize that, hmm, these things that I enjoy doing, these things that I notice people have complimented me on, these things that I find great joy and fulfillment in doing are a part of my wiring, a part of how I was created. And when I realized that, I started to pay a little bit more attention. I started to spend more time with God. I started to be more disciplined in my day. I started to put the work in, in the things that I was already doing that I found great joy and fulfillment in and I felt I was good at. And so discovering who you are is a journey. It's a process. It takes time and tension. And most importantly, it takes work. It takes work in season and out of season. And over time, you will look up and you will be living in your purpose. You'll be walking in your purpose. And not only will you be filled with joy and fulfillment, but that's when opportunities will start rolling in. So be patient with yourself, but also be willing to do the work to uncover and unpack your identity. Who you are, it's not gonna be defined by a person or an institution or even a religion. It's discovered with time intentionality work and for me most importantly is connecting to my creator and understanding why I'm wired the way I am why I enjoy the things I do why I find fulfillment in these things and really building a sense of appreciation for how I was created and being tapped into that degree has been a game changer for me it's given me direction I feel laser focused and it's also given me confidence so I hope that encourages you today I hope that helps you I will be over here doing the exact same thing. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will see you in the next one very soon. Bye.